This is a standard Nook form factor with an AMD Ryzen processor. It has dual LAN quad display output and plenty of features inside. This mini PC is larger with a higher TDP Ryzen 8000 series processor, but both of them have the new AMD Ryzen AI NPU. So the question is, well, which one is better? We got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is the ASRock Industrial 4x4 box. 8040U, but this is actually the 8840U version. And this has the brand new AMD Ryzen 7 8840U processor with the Ryzen AI NPU, and it can support up to 96 gigabytes of memory. There are two wired network interfaces plus Wi-Fi and a ton of expandability in a relatively normal four x four form factor. But something that we focus on on a lot of our reviews is whether or not the four x four form factor is really needing to be replaced by something a little bit larger. Sure, it's smaller, but if you can get a little bit larger of a chassis, get better cooling, well then that's an opportunity to use a higher end processor and get more performance out of it. So this B-Link SER8 PC has an AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS. The HS means that this can run at up to 65 watt TDP, whereas the U series processor that we have here is really like a 28 ish watt TDP part. And you can see side by side that the B Link is certainly a little bit larger, but it's using that really for cooling. So instead of doing two videos, one for each, I thought, well, why don't we just go and do one video and then really talk about the difference between keeping a 4x4 form factor from a larger vendor or going to a larger form factor from a smaller vendor and which one's better. And before we get too far in this, I want to say thank you to ASRock Industrial for providing their unit, B-Link for providing their unit, and also the STH YouTube members for helping provide funds so we can go and buy stuff to go put in these so we can actually configure them. With that, let's get to the hardware. Okay, so let's talk about the hardware of this little 4x4 box. Now, this is a form factor that we've reviewed a number of generations. ASRock Industrial has not just the AMD versions of this, but they're also Intel versions, so you can pretty much get whatever you want. So if you don't want the AMD Ryzen AI NPU, you can go get the Intel one just as easily. Okay, so taking a look at the box real quick, up front we have our audio jack, and then we have a USB type A port. Now this is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, so it's a 10 gigabit per second port. Next to that, we have two USB 4 ports. Now these USB 4 ports can also do display port output mode, so these are actually display outputs as well. Now looking at the top of the system, we have some plastic. On the sides, we have some vents. Underneath, we have some rubber feet, okay? And then uh, on the back, let's get to that because that's what we really want to see here. And let's start with what we have here, which is our power input. Next to that, we have two USB type A ports, but these are USB 2 ports. Some people ask, why do we still have USB 2 ports? And the big reason is really that these tend to work pretty well, especially if you have like wireless dongles for like your wireless keyboard and mouse and stuff like that. So that's why we tend to see those. There are also some peripherals that just work better with USB 2. They're supposed to be backward compatible, but that's just Kind of life. Now next to that we have our two HDMI outputs, so we have a total of four display outputs, and then we have two Ethernet ports. Now, one thing I wish that ASRock Industrial did was just label which port is which. You would have no idea that these are two different Realtek ports. One is a Realtek 8125BG, which is your two and a half gig port. The other one is your one gig port, which is an 8211. Okay, so looking inside this mini PC, it's a pretty standard layout. Now, first, let's talk about the memory. The DDR5 SODIMs are DDR5 5600 memory, and we managed to put in two crucial 48 gig DIMMs for a total of 96 gigabytes of memory. Now, these crucial DIMMs are the ones that we just recommend. We have an entire main site post on them. Uh, if, if you're going to get a mini PC, they just, if they work and the DIMMs are not like DOA or something like that, then they pretty much work in every mini PC that we use. They may not be the fastest, but at least they work. And that just saves a whole bunch of headache, which is why we're always using these crucial ones. They're not paying us for those. It's just that uh, it saves our time. Now, one of the standard features is that you get a MediaTek RZ616, which is a preferred AMD solution for Wi-Fi 6E. You don't get Wi-Fi 7 in this, which is kind of a bummer but Wi-Fi 6E is probably more prevalent right now, so I guess that makes sense. Now inside you get two M.2 slots, but one is a 2280 and the other is a 2242, so a 80 millimeter and 42 millimeter slot. One fun thing that we did was we are using the FitQuad SSD that didn't work in the ASUS NUC that we tried recently in a video that we had, but it actually worked in this no problem. Still, with 96 gigabytes of memory, two NVMe SSDs, you also get Wi-Fi 6E, a two and a half gig port, a one gig port, there's a lot you can do with 
with a system like this. Of course, one of the big features is the AMD Ryzen 8840U processor. Now this is a 28-ish watt TDP processor that has eight cores and 16 threads. And frankly, we've seen AMD CPUs with eight cores and 16 threads for it feels like forever. It feels like it's almost stagnated at that level. But we also get a couple of accelerators. Now the AMD Radeon 780M that's in this is actually pretty decent. Now AMD is going to increase the speed of their integrated GPUs, of course, in future generations. But on the other hand, this is really one where I think for a lot of like casual gamers, like esports titles and stuff like that, this is actually pretty useful. Now the other feature, of course, is that this also has our AMD Ryzen AI NPU. Now, of course, the NPU space is something that all of the manufacturers, whether that's Intel, AMD, or some of the ARM vendors, they're all trying to go and innovate on that NPU. So that is something that is going to be faster in future generations. But on the other hand, having NPU built in, plus having the GPU, which can do hardware, video encode, and decode, uh, those are really useful, especially when you think of this like as an industrial PC, or if you're doing AI applications where you need that encode decode, uh, that's something that's actually pretty nice. Now, I know AI is a huge buzzword right now, but on the other hand, we are going to see more applications take advantage of the NPUs, so I think that they are useful. And one advantage of this processor is the fact that it is a lower power processor, even though you get all of that compute built in. But then the question is, how does this compare to the B-Link unit? Okay, so let's take a look at this. And uh, first we get our power button, and next up we get a clear CMOS uh, little uh, button or recess button. At least this isn't a huge one like we've seen on some other mini PCs. Next that we get our 3.5 millimeter audio jack and then a USB type C port. Now this is only a 10 gigabit per second port. It's not a fancy USB 4 port, for example. Next to that USB C port, we get a type A port and that is also a USB 3 gen 2 port. So that's also a 10 gigabit per second port. Okay, now moving to the back, we get our DC in, of course. And then we get a couple of other features. On the front, I mentioned that the USB port is not a USB 4 port, but on the back, we we do get a USB Type-C and a USB 4 port. For other display outputs, we also get an HDMI port and a DisplayPort port. So one thing you are giving up with the B-Link is you are giving up an additional display output. Now, of course, you get three, which is enough for most people, frankly. But on the other hand, if you do need to go and power multiple displays, then you're kind of stuck with only three on this. Now, we also get a headset jack and a two and a half gig LAN port. We only get a single LAN port, not two. Again, I think this is more of like, you know, this works for most folks, maybe not everybody, but it also lowers the cost by only having one. But the USB situation on this is just totally weird and it's unnecessarily weird because the middle USB type A port. Well, that's a USB 2 port. It's only labeled USB. Now there's also another stack of USB type A ports also just labeled USB, but one of them is a USB 3 gen 2 port. So a 10 gigabit per second port. And the other one is a USB 2 port. Now as rock industrial, I wish that they did better on their labeling as well. But here, I mean, man, I just wish that these things said this is USB 3. This is USB 2. That would be nice. And also why not just put the USB 2 ports together and have the USB 3 because it's different sitting out all by itself. I don't know. But the other big feature that you will see on this is the fact that this back panel has a giant vent for the cooling solution. Most of this chassis on the inside is dedicated really to cooling, and I think that's pretty important. Oh, and on the bottom of this, we get a plastic cover that's vented, which I guess is good. Okay, and let me just kind of show you what I think my least favorite feature of this entire mini PC is. So when you open up this bottom lid after four screws, by the way, inside it, there's a dust filter. Now, this is a feature that B-Link is like, hey, this is the best thing, but let me give you my thought. This dust filter has more screws in it. On one hand, I like the idea of having a dust filter and it's probably to me at least more useful than having a two and a half inch SATA bay or something like that. But on the other hand, I mean, man, it's just such a pain to have to go do that. Okay, so once you're inside, there are some cool things that they did and some things again that are a little bit painful. So one of the things that you're gonna see is that we have our two SODIMM slots. The B-Link SCR8 comes standard with 32 gigabytes of memory and a one terabyte SSD in this configuration. But of course you could upgrade that if you wanted. Now, the other side over here is this little heatsink area. And underneath this heatsink is two NVMe slots. Now these two NVMe slots take M.2 2280, so at least they match. And that's kind of nice because you can get matching SSDs if you wanted that. Now, while I like the idea of having a heatsink for your M.2 SSDs, especially on the bottom of these things, I think that's a great idea. The one thing that is uh, well, definitely kind of a bummer is the fact that you have to go and take out two more screws. And these are recessed a pretty decent amount. So just to get to your M.2 SSDs, we needed to undo four screws for the bottom, 
two screws for the dust plate, and then another two screws for this heat sink. And the other thing that's under here is also the Wi-Fi card, which is a Wi-Fi 6 card, and that's a Intel-based solution. But there's another area of innovation that B-Link went into in this that I think is really important. So what you're gonna see is that this is the front panel of the unit, and when you're inside, all of these front panel ports are actually connected via this little cable and on this little breakout board. What that allows B-Link to do is build a channel between the main motherboard and this kind of front IO to go and suck air through the chassis. If you look from this angle over here, you can actually see the fan. Now, while that may not seem like a huge feature, having airflow get through this and out the back of this, I think is actually a pretty cool idea because it gives B-Link better cooling than it would have otherwise. Now, the processor in this unit is the AMD Ryzen 7 8845HS. Now, this is a higher power part that you really see in things like gaming PCs. Again, you still have eight cores and 16 threads. You have the AMD Radeon 780M graphics and an NPU. So you can do a lot of the same things on the accelerator side, but you do get more TDP for everything to work. With that, I think it's time to get to performance. Okay, so let's talk about the performance of these two systems uh, just real quickly. So I think there are really two things that I wanna talk about. The first thing is the fact that, yeah, if you do have the B-Link unit, you do get a faster processor. The 8845HS is faster than the 8840U. That's just kind of a byproduct of having more TDP. Now, one thing that was kind of fun was that on some benchmarks, especially like Field Geekbench or something like that, you'll see that the single threaded scores were actually pretty close between the two of them. But when we scale to multi-threaded workloads, we do get at least eight to 10% more performance pretty easily just by having that higher TDP. I think if I were trying to play games, I would probably use the B-Link PC. On the other hand, if I was doing something like an industrial PC application, I do think that the performance of the 8840U is perfectly good. And so I think that that's something that maybe that's why ASRock chose the lower power part. Plus it also is a little bit smaller. And so I just kind of think that maybe these things are optimized at different points. But what we really need to look at is power. So let's get over there for that. Okay, so let's talk about the power noise real quick. First off, the ASRock system uses much less power because it's a 28 watt CPU. Okay, so at idle, the ASRock industrial box uses something like 6.5 to maybe nine watts. It jumps around a bit depending on what the OS is doing. The package power consumption when you're doing that is often in like the 2.8-ish watt range. So that's super low power consumption. Even though the system idles with maybe a two point something watt idle on the package, when you start bursting up, you're gonna go over 30 watts more. So you're somewhere in that like maybe 33 to 35 watt range. And then the overall system power consumption while it's doing that is maybe 46 to 47 watts, could be a little bit more, a little less, but somewhere around there. But what happens pretty quickly is that we go down into a sustained range. That sustained range is about 28, 29 watts on the CPU. And then you'll see the overall system power consumption settle into maybe that 30 to 39, maybe 40 watt range, but just somewhere in there. So it's, it's honestly a very low power system. One of the benefits of that is that in our 34 DBA noise floor studio, it was maybe 36, 38 watts the vast majority of time that we were testing it. So it was a very low, uh, just kind of noise system. Now the B-Link SCR8, the idle package power consumption was somewhere in that 3.7 to 4.5 watt range. That's because we have a much higher wattage processor. Now our idle system power consumption is somewhere in that seven to 10 watt range. So it's pretty similar, but it was a a little bit higher than we saw on the ASRock system. Where things really changed though was when we talk about the load and the sustained performance because what we saw was that we got in that 55 to 58 watts no problem on the B-Link system and it just stayed there. It didn't go down from that. So instead of seeing something like we saw in the ASRock where you have like a level of performance and then you know the clock speed goes down and you get a little lower power and all kinds of it, you did not get that on this B-Link. In fact, you can even run this thing at 65 watts on the processor and get all the way, you know, and just see that sustained performance. But overall, the system power consumption, when you're running in that, say, 58 watt range or 55 watt range, somewhere in there on the package, you're gonna start to see power consumption get well into that 77 to 79 watt range, and you can go well over 85 watts when you have the CTDP set higher. And overall, the noise stayed relatively good, 36 to 39 dBA. Both of them ran the vast majority of our tests at under 40 dBA, which means that when the air conditioners here in Scottsdale were going, you just couldn't hear the systems. So overall, the B-Link unit definitely used more power. It's a little bit noisier, but it's pretty darn close. The ASRock system benefited from the fact that it was a lower power system, even though we still have pretty much the same compute resources
versus just different frequencies and different power going into the package. So of course the B-Link was faster, but it's also using more power to do that, which makes sense. With that, let's get to our key lessons learned. Okay, so through all of this, what did we learn? Well, I think the big thing that I learned at least is that you really do see two very different optimizations. I mean, for example, if you have a whole bunch of these four by four mini PCs, NUX, whatever, um, you know, you may just wanna have a four by four form factor. B-Link changes the SER series, like the form factors on that all the time. So what I think ASRock Industrial is doing is they're saying like, hey, we're gonna have like one form factor. If you build for this, you're gonna be able to use it for multiple generations. And for industrial customers, I guess that makes a lot of sense. There's also a lot of just stuff out there for Nook size systems. And so I totally get that. But from a CPU performance perspective, the B-Link unit certainly has better performance. I mean, that was pretty easy to see and it was across all of our multi-threaded benchmarks. You could see that no problem. So if I really wanna do something like play a game or something like that, I probably would go with the B-Link SCR8 because I think that makes a little bit more sense. From a networking perspective, the ASRock Industrial is way better. I mean, not only do we get a two and a half and a one gig NIC, but we also get Wi-Fi 6E, whereas with the B-Link SCR8, we have Wi-Fi 6 and we have a two and a half gig port. So you just get you know, one less port. One thing I didn't like on either of these is the labeling. Please, please label your USB ports at least with what the heck they are. Is it a USB 2 port? Is it a USB 3 port? Which speed of USB 3 is it? Is it five gigabits per second, 10 gigabits? per second or is it a USB 4 port? To me, it just feels like that's a big miss and something that should be easy to go and do. While I like the cooling that B-Link did, I think that the ASRock Industrial is much easier to service. The ASRock Industrial also has four display outputs, whereas the B-Link only has three. But next, I think we really need to talk about what you get in terms of pricing. So maybe it's also looking at the value of these. So the ASRock Industrial unit is $599 on Newegg as I'm filming this. It could go a little up and down based on discounts and all that kind of stuff, but that's how much we generally see these for. And that seems about in line with some of the previous generations that we've looked at. But for $599, you're only getting a bare bones PC. So that means that you have to go put memory in it. You also have to go put an SSD in it. If you want to go up to 96 gigabytes of memory, then maybe not getting any memory in there is great. If you want to use a large SSD, then maybe it's nice to not have any and save a couple dollars. The other thing you don't get though is you don't get an operating system. So if you want Windows, well, you're probably gonna have to go pay for it. If you're using Linux, of course you don't care. But for that extra, say $50 or so for the B-Link SCR8, you're getting a lot when you look at it, right? First, you're getting a one terabyte NVMe SSD, which means that you have Windows 11 and that can be pre-installed for you. So you don't have to go and install an operating system unless you wanna put Linux on there and you don't have to go install a SSD. You also get 32 gigabytes of memory, which I think is a pretty good match for these systems. And so if you don't wanna go any higher than that, well, you get it included here in the price. Now, when it comes to power adapters, I have to say there are definitely more regulatory markings and all that kind of stuff on the ASRock Industrial one, but it is also a much larger power brick. I think that for an extra 20 watts, I don't really know if uh, I love love the fact that it's this much larger. So I do think that B-Link actually did a better job on the power adapters, if that matters to you. Overall though, I think I came up with a pretty good idea of these two systems, right? Like on the one hand, the B-Link system, if you're going to play games, you're using it as desktop, I actually think that one's a better option. But on the other hand, if you want to make a server or you want to have something where you're going out and I don't know, like processing data. So you're taking like video input from cameras, you're decoding that, then you're going and doing some kind of like AI operation on it and then doing something based on that. I actually think that the more connectivity that you get in the smaller ASRock and lower power ASRock system is probably what I would go for. So from a lower power operation and a connectivity perspective, I actually really like the ASRock industrial one. But on the other hand, I think if you're going to use it as desktop, then I would probably just get the B-Link SCR8 and be done with it. And guys, I hope you like this look at these two systems. They were really fun to go and review. We have tons of other mini PC reviews. You. So if you want something else, definitely go check those out. Also, if you did like this, well, why don't you share it with your friends, but also give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.